Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of a case of Hashimoto thyroiditis. Hashimoto thyroiditis is an autoimmune condition where there is a breakdown of self-tolerance and so there is immune-mediated destruction of the thyroid parenchyma. So this can eventually lead to hypothyroidism. Microscopically, we can see that the whole gland looks very abnormal. Instead of seeing the usual thyroid follicles filled with pink colloid, the gland actually looks a lot bluer on low magnification. And this is quite a diffuse process, as you can see. We also can notice some very interesting looking areas, which I will zoom into later. Let's have a look at these more diffuse areas. And what we are seeing here are several different cell types. These pinker nests of cells are follicular cells. So the thyroid follicles are atrophic. There is hardly any colloid. And the follicular cells themselves exhibit some interesting features. The cells are enlarged. They contain abundant pink granular appearing cytoplasm. And this is known as Hertel cell change or oncocytic change. In between the follicular cells, we see a lot of very, very small cells with rounded nuclei. These are all infiltrating lymphocytes. And also among the lymphocytes, we see other cell types. For example, over here, we can see a cell that is larger than a lymphocyte. This would be a lymphocyte in comparison. This cell has a very eccentric, rather round nucleus. And the nuclear chromatin has this very coarse clock phase kind of arrangement. We can see that it's clumped towards the periphery of the nucleus or towards the nuclear membrane. And beside the nucleus is this slightly pinker area, which is paler. And this is known as a perinuclear Hof. And then more peripherally in the cytoplasm, there is a bluish hue. This is a classical appearance of a plasma cell. There are some other plasma cells here as well. And if you are lucky, you will be able to see that the nucleus is very eccentric and you'll see this pink perinuclear Hof. And this particular area also shows the Hertel cell change or the oncocytic change very clearly where you can see that the follicular cells are large. They have much more abundant granular pink cytoplasm than is usual. So we have a combination of features microscopically. We have infiltration by lymphocytes and some plasma cells. We have atrophy of the thyroid follicles with the follicular cells exhibiting oncocytic change or Hertel cell change. In this area, we can see some reactive lymphoid follicles with germinal centers, just as you would see in lymph nodes. If we pull back to low magnification, we can sort of figure out that grossly, this is a rather diffuse process. So the gland usually will look pale and enlarged grossly. Most of the time, it is symmetrically enlarged. The reason why it looks pale is because of this dense lymphoid infiltrate. Also, in between the lymphoid infiltrates, we can see some pinker areas, and this is actually collagen, hence there is some fibrosis as well. So usually there is variable inflammation, destruction of follicles, and fibrosis in Hashimoto thyroiditis. Let's have a very quick look at the gross appearance. This is just to very quickly show you how a normal thyroid gland should look. So here is the cut surface of a normal thyroid gland. And you can see that it is quite dark brown in color because it is a very vascular gland. And I'm going to now show you an example of Hashimoto thyroiditis. So here we can see that the thyroid gland is symmetrically enlarged. We have one lobe, another lobe, and the isthmus. And it's actually quite pale in color. And if we just move it around, we don't see any obvious discrete tumor nodules, but this preserved lobulated architecture. And it is much paler than what we saw earlier in the normal thyroid gland. Clinically, these patients may present with a small diffuse goiter, or they may also present with symptoms of hypothyroidism. 
Hence, in summary, this is an example of Hashimoto thyroiditis, where there is diffuse infiltration of the thyroid parenchyma with lymphocytes, as well as reactive lymphoid follicles, also some plasma cells, and the thyroid follicles show marked atrophy, and the follicular cells exhibit Herthel cell change or oncocytic change. One of the important things to note about Hashimoto thyroiditis is that these patients, after a long-standing disease, may go on to develop thyroid lymphoma, and the warning signs or the red flag signs would be a rapidly enlarging thyroid gland. If you would like to directly explore our virtual specimens as I have demonstrated here, you may actually find them in our online pathology resource path web. The registration is free, so you simply need to click on the link in the video description to register, and you will be able to access our virtual pathology museum and lots more resources. Thank you.